That's right. My name is Dan, and I, I started two years ago on my PhD, which is on the assessment of refugees. And one of the things that I'm doing in my PhD is developing an implicit um, instrument to assess uh, personality traits. So, I'll short to tell, tell you about NOAA. NOAA is a psychological consultancy agency, and it works in close collaboration with uh, the FU. And I also work at NOAA, and NOAA is um, uh, also financing my project to do this um, to do this work. So something that we do at NOAA is uh, developing instruments. We have a variety of instruments, and we sell these instruments to clients, um, educational institutions, governmental institutions, but also just um, uh, well companies. We we do uh, assessments. We conduct scientific research, and we place high importance to test fairness. So, Art already said something about this. There is a need for alternative methods to self-report. So, people can, especially in high state conditions, fake their responses, um, and, well, that's obviously a problem. And not only can they... They're not always inclined to necessarily fake their response, but maybe they do not... Maybe they unintentionally uh, provide answers that do not really reflect their personality traits. And a last thing is that, uh, is that self-reports are not always comparable between uh, cultural groups. So I developed a new instrument, with, instrument which I label the normative judgment test. And so you can say that the fundamental presupposition of this whole instrument is that your perception um, of others indicates something about yourself. So here is this, you see a picture of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and you might think that Zlatan is arrogant, but you might also think that he's just self-confident. And your perception about Zlatan may indicate something about yourself, because there is a certainly in well variation in how people perceive Zlatan to be. And so what we do in this instrument is not present people with, uh, well, celebrities and soccer players, but what we do is we present them with items such as this one. So read with me. Jane works at the lunchroom. In front of the lunchroom, there are usually two product promoters, distributing products like chocolates and drinks. Jane gives them free lunch, and in return, they give her many of the products that they are supposed to distribute to the people outside. Jane takes these products home with her. The question is, how dishonest do you consider Jane to be? And you might believe, you might think that Jane is not at all dishonest, or maybe just a little bit dishonest. But you might also believe, think that she is moderately, very, or completely dishonest. And people differ in how they perceive Jane to be. And so the idea is that if you believe that Jane is not at all, or maybe just a little bit dishonest, this will indicate something about your own dishonesty. So something that we are trying to measure with this instrument is um, one of the six personality dimensions that also, uh, Art also mentioned, which is honesty and humility, also referred as integrity. And um, so we use a lot of these items and then we assess that to people and I will show you shortly about, I will present to you short, shortly about one study that we've conducted among 230 employees. We assess the hexaco, which is the uh, well-known personality inventory. We assess 12 of such items that I've just shown to you. And we assessed um, two outcome variables, which is counterproductive work behavior, undesirable work uh, behavior at work, and um, organizational citizenship behavior, which is more or less desirable behavior at work. And so here, very shortly, the results of this study. So not only were we able to predict um, uh, these outcomes, counterproductive work behavior and organizational citizenship behavior using this instrument, but we also find that we could explain even more variance beyond what we can with the hexaco. So here you see, um, on the left you see the table for the outcome variable counterproductive work behavior. You see in model one that honesty, humility and conscientiousness are predictors of counterproductive work behavior and the R square which is the last row, shows that 22% of the variance in this outcome variable can be explained using the hexaco. But if we add, in addition to the hexaco, um, the, um, uh, the implicit um, instrument, uh, we, can share, we can explain about 5% more variance in counterproductive work behavior. And we find a similar pattern for organizational citizenship behavior, where extroversion and conscientiousness are predictors of organizational citizenship behavior. But... In addition, if you add um, the implicit instrument, you can um, explain about 4% more 
variance in this outcome. So to, very, uh, to summarize, self-report measures have limitations, especially high, in high stakes, high stake conditions. Um, in the field of INO psychology, there is an increased interest for alternative methods. And well, the initial findings of this instrument um, are promising, but we need to do more research, and that's what we are doing at the moment. Thank you. Place for one question. I would like to look at other reports, so that's also in the description.